Welcome to Late Night Creations. My name is Kendra. I'm so glad you're here where I do DIYs, decor makeovers, thrift flips, and so much more. Today I'm participating in the five under five monthly challenge. This month it's fall frenzy. So we had to make five decor items for under $5, not a problem. So check out this video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel, gets these videos out there for other people to watch and leave me a comment. Let me know which one of them was your favorite. Hopefully it's gonna be hard for you to choose. For this first DIY, I picked up this little cutting board at Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna take this glue stick that my cousin gave me that's almost gone, but it's amazing, and I'm going to just glue some of this packing paper that you get on a roll at Dollar Tree and cover up this side with the glitter on it and then flip it over, use my X-Acto knife and cut it out because that's gonna be the back. And we want the back to be all finished out so that our project looks nice and finished. So that's that. And then on the front side, we're gonna paint it. So I'm gonna start with this paint color that I mixed up because I don't have any chalk paint that is like um, kind of a cashew or an off-white or Adirondack or any of those cool colors. And then I have this other color that I mixed. I really like to mix my own colors apparently. Um, and I've been using this color for a while and I'm just using the chocolate sprinkles by Apple Barrel and just giving this some dry brushing to give it some dimension and just as much or as little as you like. Now I'm taking my little handy dandy rag of a t-shirt. I use this a lot in my uh, crafting and I'm just rubbing it really good and, and that will give me a nice smooth finish. Now I've made this little decal on my Cricut and I'm just sizing it all up and I'm not showing you all the details of how I weeded it and how I got the transfer tape on there. If you need to see that there are plenty of videos out there or you can watch some other of my videos where I do show you how to do that. So I'm going to put these little vines on there that I created through Cricut Design Space. I just picked a couple little designs I liked and put them together to make the design that I wanted that wanted to I wanted it to work on here. Okay, now I've got this twine. These were leftover pieces that, you know, when I take it off a project and I say, we're gonna save this for later because I'm gonna use it. Well now, it's later and I'm gonna use it. So I'm just gonna glue it down on the back. I'm gonna wrap it around until I run out because that ends up being however much I wanted, whether it was however much I wanted or not. No, it ended up being just fine, just where I wanted it. I'm just gonna snip that off, press that down, hold it till that glue kinda dries uh, sometimes I blow it a little bit or I fan it a little bit just to get that glue dry, let it dry. And then I'm going to make just a simple little bow with a couple little loops. I didn't show you how to make that. And then just glue it right up on top. Now, you could wrap it all the way up the top of that little handle if you wanted to or put some greenery in. But I liked it just like this. Now this challenge is making five items under five dollars each and it's hosted every month by missy from crafty crafty cove diy and emily from farm charm chic and this month's guest host is robin from robin's buys and diys now i'm going to leave everybody's channel linked in the description box below go and check out their channels they are awesome creators and also the playlist for this challenge will be linked in the description box and go and watch all of those videos and see what all everyone else created. There will be some good stuff there. Okay, for my next DIY, I bought these little plaques off Amazon. There were 12 of them for $14.99, which made them about $1.25 each. And there were three different shapes. And they're, they're kind of thin, but they're great for plaques. You could use them by themselves or add them to some, a, you know, a bigger project. So I'm using this moss green acrylic paint, and I'm trying not to get it on the edge because I kind of like that um, burnt brown edge. So I'm just taking the paint out to the edge so that, it, you know, it doesn't um, get on that edge. 
Then I'm gonna take the chocolate sprinkles again and I'm gonna just dry brush some on the edges to make it look a little distressed, a little worn. And I could have painted brown and then that and then sanded it, but I think this is a much easier technique. So just however much you like or don't like, put it where you want, where you don't want. I just kind of eyeball it and just keep adding until I like it. And then I've kind of thought that this green was a little bit dark to put my decal on. I made a decal to go in the center. And so I got out this DIY white wax. Um, it's by DIY, that's the name of the company. And so I just put it right in the center where I'm gonna put my decal. And I thought, well, it would lighten up the center and give it some dimension. Here I go with my um, little piece of a t-shirt. I'll take my husband's old undershirts and just cut it up in pieces. Um, yeah, he does wear undershirts. Then I'm just gonna rub that in there and then it just, it kind of makes that undershirts or those t-shirts will kind of make it smooth too. It doesn't sand it like sand or sandpaper or anything. Okay, so I think that DIY wax, I should remember that you can't put um, this vinyl down on top of it. So what I did was, you can see, I'm gonna show you real slow right now, that you can see where I tried to put it down. So I'm just gonna take this black paint marker. These paint markers are, I'm gonna try to remember to put in the description box below the name of them because I don't remember if I showed you on the screen just now what they are, but they are amazing. I get them on Amazon and I will put it in the description box below because they are great. They're really easy to use and they look like paint when you're done. And so here you go, see? So I just was able to see where that decal was enough to paint it on there and it dries super fast. Now I'm just gonna take a piece of twine and I'm gonna tie it on one side and then I'm going to use a little piece of uh, masking tape on the end of the other end of that piece of twine and then I'm gonna put some beads. I was just gonna put a few on each side because I normally like that look, but for some reason I decided to make the whole hanger solid beads. So that's what I did. And then I'm just gonna tie the other side the same, in the same manner that I tied the first side, which was a little bit tricky because I wanted it, I needed it to be tight down there and I needed the uh, twine to end up on the back side of the plaque. But I managed, almost got out of frame there. Sorry about that. And I'm just gonna snip that, glue it back down on the side and that is done. I think it turned out so cute. Um, let me know what you think about this one. It was super simple. Okay, moving right along. Here's uh, my DIY number three. This one was a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be so simple and so easy. I picked up this little um, coffee cup at Dollar Tree. It has a little stand, so it stands freestanding. It's heavy, it's MDF, but it's heavy. And I thought, well, I'm gonna paint this out and make a little pumpkin spice coffee cup. And the chalk paint painted on there fairly good. I needed to do a couple coats. I didn't have any orange chalk paint, so I thought I would just put as many coats as it took of this orange pumpkin, I think it's called actually called pumpkin um, acrylic paint. And so I was very careful and I got it all on there, got one coat, let it completely dry, even used my heat gun a little bit to dry it. It was absolutely completely dry. Don't know why I'm showing you so much of that, okay? Let it dry. Then I came back. I got another little coat of the this color that I mixed up myself. I'm always mixing up my own colors, y'all. But it's because then I get the color I want. Okay, so here I go to do the second coat. And it is just rip, ripping off that first coat. And it kind of did it all over. I kept thinking, well, if I could just do it with some chalk paint. So I mixed some reds and yellows and browns until I got the color that I wanted and it, it it was still doing that. It was just blotchy and anyway, so I didn't like it. So plan B, don't give up. 
persevere. So I had a second one because I'd picked up several of them because I really liked these. So I'm just going to take a regular piece of <laughs> printer paper. I'm not even going to tell you that I almost said tapping paper. Okay, tell me in the comments below if you know what tapping paper is. Okay, printer paper, just regular printer paper, and I'm just going to cut out the shape. I'm going to make a template for that orange that's on my other one, and I'm going to put uh, make some scrapbook paper. I'm going to put some scrapbook paper over it. And there we go. I'm just going to trace. I can see through that paper. It's thin enough, and I kind of already know the shape where it's going to be. I can kind of pick that paper up and look at it and I can see through there good enough. You can even see through there on the video. Okay, so I'm just tracing that over and it doesn't even really have to be perfect. Just, you know, make it work. Now I'm gonna cut those out and then that's what I'm gonna trace my scrapbook paper. I'm gonna make sure that that fits. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it a little bit more, which I really shouldn't have done because then it was too small, but then I, I made that adjustment whenever I cut it out on my scrapbook paper. So I'm going to cut the top one. Very simple, like kids in first grade can do this. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to get my scrapbook paper, my fall scrapbook paper, and I'm going to just trace this out. So I'm going to just trace it on there, both pieces, and then I'm just going to cut both pieces out, and I'm going to glue it down to that cup. Now, this is just to show you, I left the footage in just to show you that it doesn't matter, you just have to stick with it. But this um, scrapbook paper I have had for a long time, I got it in a paper pad from Hobby Lobby when they have it um, half price, which is like every other week. So I'm saying I may, I cut that a little bit bigger than you can see my lines, I cut on the outside of my lines so that it was a little bigger because I knew I'd cut it a little bit short in the first place. So just make those adjustments. And then I can always trim it off with my X-Acto knife. Or if you prefer the sandpaper method, you can do that too. I just think it kind of makes the edges of my paper sometimes look a little rough. So if you're going for the distressed look, that's perfect. But I really was trying to not go for that look on this necessarily. Okay, so glue that down. I love this paper. Anyway, I was talking about those paper pads, and I just have kept that seasonal one. Um, that's the best time to get those paper packs is when Hobby Lobby has their scrapbook paper on half price. Those big old paper pads you can get, and I got this one for like $10, I think, and I've been using it and using it. Okay, now I take Fawn. This is Fawn by Waverly, I believe, and I actually got this one on clearance at Walmart um, and I'm just gonna put a little shadows in there to make that look like that lid on those little disposable cups and then I got a little bit too much I thought so I'm just gonna take my little sandpaper this actually goes to my sander but you know it's what I had and so I'm just gonna sand it a little bit take my little cloth wipe the sandpaper off and then I'm gonna just take a little little bit on the side of this little flat brush and just go around the edges of this scrapbook paper. It just give it a little bit dimension. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then I was so afraid to put a decal on that because I had one made um, in a dark brown, but I was so afraid to put it on there because I was afraid it was gonna peel my paint off and I had worked so hard on this. So I just decided to use a brown permanent marker and just do my best handwriting. So what I did was I got a piece of that um, printer paper that I had left over scrap from that and I just practiced on it to see now I always go uphill but you know I just do that I don't know why when I'm writing in cursive but anyway so I think mm, not too bad I can do that on here it's about the right size so I'm just going to hope for the best <laughs> fingers crossed and here we go hello Pumpkin spice. Yep, went uphill a little bit. It's okay. When it's hand lettered and you're writing it yourself, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in fact, that's what makes it look homemade. I love it. I love this more than my original idea. 
So let me know what you think. Okay, so that cup gave me a little bit of a problem, but I did figure out what the problem was. So the next one that I paint, I'll know what the problem was, but I wanted to leave that footage in there so you can see that even those of us who have crafted for 40 plus years, um, still come up with challenges. So don't give up. Just keep letting those creative juices flow and figure out a way to still make it look cute because actually I think it turned out better than I thought it would have in the first place. Okay, I picked up this little metal decor piece. I have some um, nautical rope and these little leather, I don't know what you want to call them, these little leather leaves. Um, at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to unravel this three ply cord and I'm just going to use one cord and it only took that one cord. I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom. I'm going to hold it till it like really adheres good. I'm trying to get myself all untangled. Wad it up and I'm just going to wrap it. I'm just going to wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap until all of it, um, I have it all wrapped up. Now I'm going to show you in you know, intervals of it. You don't have to watch me wrap the whole thing. But I did, um, as I was wrapping, I kind of untwisted so that, that it was loose. Okay, so I did it all the way around, and then I'm gonna show you how I put some more glue there, and then how I'm gonna just go under. I hope you can see that I'm going too fast. And then over. So it's all one continuous. I never cut it, and then I'm twisting it. The opposite way to make that cord like a little wider I don't know how to say that but I'm untwisting it a little bit to make it looser to make the cord looser okay so here I did that to all of it got it all wrapped up and then at the very end I'm just tucking this all around there so I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I got it all wrapped and it really didn't even take me that long now here I go with the fire. I'm going to burn and singe off all those little extra pieces. Now for the stem, this was a little bit challenging, but I made it work. Took a little scrap piece of burlap, wrapped it up in one of those tumbling tower blocks from that game that, at Dollar Tree. I know you've all seen that. Then I cut off that end. I really wanted it to just look really rugged. And then I took some, um, what is that? antique wax and I just painted it roughly very roughly now I put that glue on there and then I had to hold it down and then I'm wrapping the twine in the glue and up on top of the stem and that's what held it in place so it's like the glue and then it reinforced because there wasn't a flat surface to put that stem on but it turned out great so now I'm taking the leather little um, hanger off that leaf and I'm replacing it with a few strands of that um, rope that I used, that nautical rope. And I'm just going to tie it around the top of that and make a little knot there. And I think I made a little bow to go on there. Just a very, very simple little kind of shoestring bow to stick you up. And I used several little strands of that um, nautical rope and look how cute that that was so easy simple easy peasy and it turned out so cute last but not least I'm gonna use this um, scrapbook paper from this pad I was telling you about earlier and yeah, I paid $10 on half price and it has all the seasons. Beautiful. I've already used a lot of paper out of this and still have that much left. So I pulled out all the fall ones and I'm going to use this pumpkin I've had in my stash since maybe two years. I don't know. I don't even know if you can still get these, but you can get something similar if you want to do this. Um, and so I'm just going to rip off that and take all the staples out. And I thought I would use this side because of the, you know, not wanting to use the side that had glitter and all that stuff on it. But then when I really got to looking at it, there was only that one piece that had it on there and it was that metal piece. And so all I had to do was very easily rip that metal piece off. We'll save that because we may use that. 
And so when I flipped them all over, guess what? That was the only one that had glitter on it. So we're just gonna glue this paper right on top. So what I did was I picked the, the patterns that I wanted and the colors that I wanted for each one. And then I just laid those um, pieces to the pumpkin down on there, cut it out, traced it on, cut it out, and you'll see what I do in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I decided, yeah, okay, I want that one there. I do want this one. Do I want it that way or this way? No, I want it this way. So I just roughly cut what I wanted and trying to place them where I want them so I can kind of get an eye for where I want it. And there's that paper that I used on the cup earlier. And so, yeah, I'm gonna, so this is the order I decided to put them in. So I'm just going to put some glue on the little pumpkin piece and be sure I get it all, all the way out to the edges. All over my fingers, too. <laughs> all the way out to the edges. I like to use that little squeegee because if there's any little, um, you know, clumps of gum, gum, oh my goodness, clumps of glue, it will smooth them out. Okay, once I've gotten all the pieces glued down, then I'm going to go back with my X-Acto knife and just cut out it gets a really nice smooth edge especially if you have a sharp exacto knife blade in there and then i just cut that out to keep that brown stem now i'm going to take a piece of this burlap this is more scrap burlap i had and this glue that i'm using is really good you may need to use something besides glue stick if you don't have a really good heavy duty glue stick this is a really heavy duty one and i'm going to just glue that burlap down on there and then um, yep, cut it off. I know like the Aileen's Tacky Glue would be really good for this or some craft glue. Um, they have the Aileen's Tacky Glue at, or craft glue or whatever it's called. I think it's called Tacky Glue at Dollar Tree. I love that stuff. Okay, here they are all finished. And then I'm going to take two paint stir sticks and some antique wax and I'm feeling a little crowded and cramped, so I'm gonna move everything out of my way, and I'm just gonna give it a really light coat. I mean, I'm just kinda messy coat, messy, messy, just slapping it on there, and then I'm gonna take a paper towel and you know wipe most of it off so that it's not too, too dark. But I'm gonna put these, these are gonna be the slats behind our pumpkin, so you're only gonna really see um, a little bit of, of it on each side. But now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I buy it in a gallon jug in case you're new to my channel or haven't heard me say this a million times before. I buy it in a gallon jug and I've had it for several years and I use it a lot, but it's lasted me. But I put it in that smaller jar because, you know, it dries out really fast. And sometimes it even gets thick in that jar and I have to water it down a little bit. And then I'm going to put a big thick coat of it on this burlap too, so that helps help it stay glued down a little bit extra okay it's all dry because Mod Podge dries really fast and so I'm gonna kind of lay these out and figure out yep that's how I want it and then I'm gonna move that over I'm gonna put these down and then I'm gonna start gluing that pumpkin to these little sticks get them where you can't see the sticks the paint stir sticks and then I'm just gonna start gluing now it is important that these sticks are the same width apart from top to bottom. Luckily, I figured out that out before it completely dried and I was able to pull it apart a little bit. So I'm starting with the top and the bottom and then I'm gonna evenly space the rest of them as best I can, eyeballing it. If they're not perfect, that's not a problem either because, you know, uh, if you think they have to be perfect, then measure them by all means. But I think that it's it's good to eyeball it if you've got if you can do it almost perfect so there we go so then I decided it needed a little something something so I had these ribbons that I had picked up at Dollar Tree and I love these they're they're not burlap they're kind of almost feel like a little bit of linen to them and then of course that little soft lacy one that I love because I'm a shabby chic kind of girl and I love this messy bow. I'm not very good at it, but I absolutely love it. So I made it kind of almost like a pom-pom. <laughs> um, but then I got these rose, wooden rose curl roses. 
uh, from Dollar Tree and I just thought they were so natural and rustic looking. I love them. So I thought they would be good for fall. So I'm just going to glue a couple of them to the middle of this uh, little bow and put that on there and we are done. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great day and remember, be still and know that he is God.